Good evening, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us on today. This is our Tuesday Bible study, yes. CCKM. I am Pastor Michael Burford, along with my beautiful wife, Prophetess Makiba Burford. We are the senior leaders of Christ Centered Kingdom Ministries. Do us a favor, please share this with your friends, your family, and your followers. You can go to our our page, uh, our Facebook page, yes. our church Facebook page, uh, CCKM Church, and like our page. You get all the notifications. Then subscribe to our YouTube channel, Christ Center Kingdom Ministries, and then make sure you hit the bell that you'll get all the notifications when we are on. So we are live and in living color. So we appreciate each of you that's joining us on today. It is a has been a very hot day. So yes. hopefully you all... <laughs> are staying hydrated and up on the fans and or the AC or what have you. And so we thank God for that. So we're going to get ready to pray and then go into our Bible study on tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you. We give you glory, God. We give you honor. Father, we give your name the praise. Thank you, Father God, for another chance, another opportunity, Father God, for us to all gather together. For God, your word declares where two or three gather together in your name. Father, you will be in our midst. So, Thank God, we you. pray, God, even now yes. that you will be in the midst of us, God, yes. that you will be in the midst of those that are watching, those that are listening, God, those that are, are listening to the rebroadcast, Father. We pray, Father, God, that your presence, God, will begin to touch each and every individual. God, we pray, oh, Father, God, that you will bring health and healing, God, to the bodies, oh, Father, God, of your people, God. You know them, you see them, name by name, one by one. Father, we know that you are a healer, God. So, yes. God, we send your word to heal like you your did. people, Father God. God, we pray, oh God, that you will comfort the bereaved families, God. Give them, God, the oil of joy for the morning. God, give them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, Father. Now, God, we pray, God, that you will open up our eyes, that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, uh, if you guys remember on Sunday, Sunday we were talking about divine direction, and we are continuing that uh, uh, divine direction. Of course, uh, we're giving you some definitions, and we're going to be talking about indicators, divine direction and indicators. And so they are indicators to uh, divine direction. And many of us, as we talked about on Sunday, we let you gave you guys a definition of divine, and divine, divine just simply means relating or proceeding directly from God. Divine means relating or proceeding directly from God. And so we know direction actually means uh, instruction or order. It's an explicit instruction or an order. And so remember we talked about on Sunday that when you are putting things together, some of you that are those of you that my sister-in-law she loves to go to ikea yes. and so she is an ikea queen and so at ikea they have various things at ikea that they uh that you have to actually put together yourself mm -hmm. now i don't know if they have it where they'll put it together for you i'm not really sure i would have to ask the queen renita <laughs> if they have something where you don't have to uh, go home uh, in a box and put all the stuff together. But you have to follow the instructions, the directions in the box in order to get whatever it is you bought from Ikea or wherever you, whatever it is you bought from the store. It's a, if it's a bicycle that you are preparing for your child or you're trying to put together for him or her, yes. it's always good to follow the instructions. And so we know that divine direction comes from God. And then in the indicators, the word indicator actually means, it means a measurement or a gauge. Many of us have uh, gauges that, those of us that have those vehicles, they'll tell you that your tire pressure or the gauge in the tires are not at the right PSI. Mm -hmm. And so there is a warning or there is a light that will come on to say that the measurements are not correct. The gauge is not correct. So you need to go to uh, somewhere where you can actually get some air in your tire. And also those of us that are driving vehicles, mm -hmm. we know that uh, um, there's a gauge 
uh, that lets us know when it's time to fill up that vehicle. Come on. And so uh, the light will come on. There may be some type of sensor. There may be some type of uh, alarm or alert that says that you are running low on gas. Yeah. And so your best bet is to get to the uh, gas station to the first gas station that you can get to because yeah. uh, sometimes people be running on E and they be like I know my vehicle yes you knew your vehicle but nevertheless <laughs> you had to call triple A or your mama them and your daddy them to come and bring a gas can because you said you know your vehicle and you ran out of gas and so we must always make sure that we are listening to and that we are following the instructions, that we are listening to and listening out for the indicators uh, in our lives to let us know that, man, it is time to move on. Yes. It is time to move forward. It is time to leave that job and or a relationship. There are indicators that says that this joker is no good. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to look at the indicators I remember uh, listening to an interview uh, with Steve Harvey, and he was saying that this lady had taught him that all you need is one red flag. You don't need a barrel full of red flags to decide if this person is a knucklehead or not. Or not. All you need is one red flag to let you know that this individual, uh, there's indicators that says that this individual is not the right person for you. Now, he or she may be the person for somebody else, but he or she is not the right person for you. And so indicators are good. And so we're going to go, if you have your Bibles and or your electronic devices, we're going to go to Genesis, the book of origin. We've been in Genesis. And we're going to look at the, uh, the 12th chapter of Genesis. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And so I'm going to uh, read some verses and then I'm going to skip a little bit. And so I'm going to start at verse number one. And it says as follows. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. I like that. You know, I'm just going to stop just a little bit. Uh, uh, Abram had departed. And so in other words, he followed the instructions. He followed the instructions that God was giving him the divine direction that came from from God and so uh, uh, one of the indicators that we uh, know is it's the voice of God God will speak to us and he will begin to share with us just like he shared with Abra, Abra, Abram Abram uh, Abram so he had his name was Abram before he changed it to Abraham and so he says here to Abram Get out of your country yes. and from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Mm -hmm. So God began to let Abram know that, listen, I need you to get out from your people, from your kinfolk. Now I want you to go and I'm going to, as you are journeying, as you're making uh, uh, this journey, as you are being directed, I'm going to show you where you ought to go. I'm going to give you where you should go. Now, oftentimes, God don't always give us all the details. God don't always give us the addresses to our final destinations. And so uh, uh, in, in that, what we have to do is we have to put our trust in the Lord. Yes. And so even as we've been just talking about divine direction and Pastor Mike let us know that divine direction divine means that it is God that that is giving the direction right and so in uh, when you think about uh, direction um, we were saying even on Sunday 
what good is directions if you're not going to follow them? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of James, right? It said this. It said that if any man lacked wisdom, let him ask. Mm -hmm. That God will give it to you liberally and upbraided, not in other words, he won't make you feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. And But what good is wisdom if you're not going to apply it? And so what I love about the scripture tonight, as Pastor Mike began to share with us, Abram, the calling of God, right? I want to just mention the courage to leave home. Mm. The courage to leave home. The mm. courage to leave the place that you may be currently residing. It's going to take courage. Courage to leave the job that you may been have been on for 25 to 30 years. Mm. And yet you sense a shifting in your spirit. It's going to require courage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe God is telling you to um, advance. Maybe he's saying to you he wants you to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, listen, God, do you know how old I am? Mm -hmm. God, I wish you would have asked me that when I was in my 20s and my 30s. But, God, I've, I've, I've crossed the line of the 40-yard line. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That was a club, I believe, here in the city of Chicago. Yeah. Oh, it's the 50-yard line. Yeah, I think it was one of those yard lines. Mm -hmm. But um, you've crossed that line, right? And mm -hmm. you're saying, ah, oh, that doesn't make sense. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say to you, faith is not logical. Mm -hmm. And so when God began to speak to Abram, ah, listen, the Bible said that now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country. It says from your family. It says leave your relatives. Mm -hmm. Oh my. It says, I need you to leave your relatives. I need you to get out of your father's house to a land that I will show you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you think about that, it is so important that we make the decision that, ah, I'm not going to make my decisions based on what I see. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make my decisions based on what I feel mm -hmm. because so many of us have been chasing feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make my decisions based on uh, the opinions of man. Mm -hmm. uh, could, can you imagine if he had uh, taken this to his father or taken this to a relative and began to have a dialogue? And What you think? Oh, my God, listen. You cannot do what man thinks, for man's wisdom is limited. But it is the God who has called you. This was Abram's calling by God. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to be careful that we don't put other people's voices above the voice of God. Mm -hmm. We've got to understand, I did that in a season of my life. I will never forget it. That God had spoken to me and God had showed me some things. And I submitted it. At that time, I had three leaders. I had three leaders in my life that I went to on an individual basis and I said this is what I believe God said to me and this is what I believe he's showing me and all three of them told me I was off all three of them told me that I um, did not hear correctly from God mm -hmm. and how many of you all know that sometimes when God speaks the truth to you you like oh God say it not so mm -hmm. say it not so but the spirit of the living God will never lie to you. Mm -hmm. He is the spirit of truth. And according to John 16 and 13, the Bible says, And when the Holy Spirit is come, mm -hmm. he, the spirit of truth, is going to lead God and direct you into all truth. Mm -hmm. He's not going to speak of himself. Oh, my goodness. But he's going to speak. Oh, my. What Jesus is saying and he's going to show us things to come. That's why when the scripture said, and I will show you, mm -hmm. I will show you the land to go to, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to begin to rely on the person of the Holy Spirit. I want to give you another scripture that tells us that you don't have to make these decisions alone, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said, according to John 14 and 26, it says, but the helper, hallelujah, we have a helper. We, oh, listen, we have the best life coach ever. You have the best mentor ever. God said to me the other, other day, because for so many years, I longed for a mentor. For so many years, I longed 
for a, a coat, somebody that would take me under their wings. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me, I've taken you under my wings. Woo! Oh God, according to Psalm 91, he said, listen, you have a place where you can abide under the shadow of my wings. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have a man to teach you, the person of the Holy Spirit will teach you. He will lead you. He mm -hmm. will guide you. But you have to. You have to activate him in your life. The Bible says that we have to acknowledge him. He is a person. He is not an it. Mm -hmm. Oh my, and he is the one that has decided which gifts you will get. He mm -hmm. is the one that have, oh my God, he is the one that inspired the word of God. The very word of God, he penned it. My goodness for us. And so we must, oh God, get out of self-dependency. If you're ever going to do anything for God, if you're ever going to do anything significant, if you're ever going to leave a mark in the earth, if you're ever going to leave a flag, that has this has been in my heart all week where I've been seeing a flag. Listen, one of the things that I saw, help me out here, Pastor Mike, is uh, I remember there was a battle between Russia and America, and the battle was who could get to the moon first. And they... The way we knew who made it to the moon first is that they put their flag to say that I have been here. I believe that we have a flag too mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God that, oh my God, I believe Abraham could have left a flag in Ur. Come on. That's where he stayed. The Bible says that just to give you some backdrop, that he lived in the uh, city of Ur mm -hmm. and, and they were moon worshipers. Mm -hmm. And so God was calling him out. God was separating him unto purpose. But God did not just say, I'm going to call you out. He called him out. But this is the part you've got to see is Abraham's response. Woo, it's one thing for God to call you, but it's another thing for you to respond correctly. Mm -hmm. And Abraham's response, we can um, read about it in Hebrews 11 and 8. And it says, by faith. By what? By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place mm -hmm. which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you that our decisions cannot be based upon what we see around us? Our decisions must be based on the word of God. And it must not just the, oh my God, listen to this. Not just the holy writ mm -hmm. which is the scripture not just the black and white pages yes but the bible said that men shall live by every word that proceedeth mm -hmm. out of the mouth of god how many of you all know that we serve a speaking god mm -hmm. we serve a god who speaks oh my and so the Bible lets us know when anytime I get to the speaking God, I, I, I automatically think about uh, the revelatory realms of God and the prophetic dimensions of God and how God would speak to us. And so God spoke to him. And so sometimes the way God speaks, you may hear him audibly. Mm -hmm. You may hear him. Uh, you may hear God speak through a vision. Mm -hmm. He may speak. Listen. Dreams are the place where God speaks. Mm -hmm. And so God may speak to you in a dream. Yes. He may speak to you in an open vision. I like to say when I was little, I used to watch, uh, have a view master. Oh, I'm dating myself now. But the view master would allow you to see pictures and you could click on mm -hmm. And you can go to the next picture. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how God, when I began to be initiated into learning about the prophetic mm -hmm. he would take these snapshots and i would see it and then later he would say remember when i showed you this mm -hmm. i showed you this for that i showed you this for that okay so he was training me in how he speaks in many different ways mm -hmm. and so not only is god god is not limited to speaking to you audibly mm -hmm. he's not limited to speaking to you visually but there are times when god will speak to you based on a prompting mm -hmm. oh my oh my goodness so let me define that prompting mm -hmm. the promptings of the holy ghost may come as a word spoken in your mind mm -hmm. 
the prompting of the Holy Spirit may come as a word spoken to your mind, as a feeling, as an idea, mm -hmm. as an impulse. Oh my. And so the Holy Spirit, a lot of times, we hear the voice of God more often than we know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, if we're too busy, come on, this is why busyness is an enemy to intimacy. Mm -hmm. It is also an enemy to direction. Yeah. Oh my, I'm telling you, you can be in that car and you can have your GPS on, but if you get distracted messing with the, the, the your music or you get distracted, oh my God, by talking to somebody in the vehicle, often you will miss your exit because you were distracted. Mm -hmm. Not because the GPS wasn't on point, not because the navigation system had error, but because you had gotten distracted. Mm -hmm. And so when it said exit, uh, exit B, exit Exit the self exit you missed your exit why because you were distracted so I want to encourage you tonight as you as we tonight desire to be led by the Spirit of the Living God that we will begin to close out all distractions anything that would draw your attention away from God oh my god we've got to be careful I was um, I saw a Christian conference for women and um, this was on Facebook, and I really wanted to go, um, or I was really interested in maybe attending. And so they had put something on um, their advertisement. And when they put this out there, the advertisement was a song, and it said, level up, level up, level up, right? Okay, for those of you all that kind of know a little bit about level up, um, I was a little slow regarding uh the song but what let me tell you what their video did my god when i heard it i was like man that song is familiar <laughs> so being the person i am i needed to google it so i googled level up because i wanted to understand what 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 were we levering up what what upgrade were we going to experience so i went and i found out that sierra mm -hmm, sierra was the one singing on this christian conference and she was saying level up level up level up level up. i'm like okay well uh my innocence trying to uh hear the song uh, she began to talk about yummy in my tummy Oh, no. See, by this time, I realized that your commercial, your intro, your introduction did not point me to Jesus. It did not lead me to a sweet song of Zion, uh, but it led me to a place. Uh, now, I only went to find out about Level Up because I heard it on your video. Uh, I got a problem with that. Let me tell you why. Because I told you all of us are following somebody. It, it, all of us are following someone. We're following someone or something. And so I'm thinking I'm on a trusted site with the church. I was not looking up something that was secular. I was trying to understand the beat because it was a cold beat. It was a nice beat. And I'm telling if you've ever heard the song, I don't know. But if you've ever heard it, it's got a, a, a really nice beat. Uh, I don't know what to call it in, in the kids' language. Um, you know, a, a nice hook or whatever it's called. But okay, yes, that led me all the way to Sierra. That led me to level up and yummy in the tummy. No, ma'am. No, sir. I'm not going to participate in that. This is why you've got to be careful. Because I truly believe that the enemy desired to sow a seed. Ah, uh, my curiosity was taking me somewhere. I didn't realize that me just wanting to know who was the artist behind the song would lead me to a song that my God could have taken me off my course. 
could have caused me, oh my goodness, to derail off of that which God had for me. This is why I told you, you've got to be careful what you post. You've got to be careful what you put on your page because you are leading somebody. Somebody is following you. And my question to you is where are you leading them? Yeah. And so God always leads us yes. to uh, righteousness, yes. peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so that's where he's going to lead us. And so anything outside of that, Come on. Uh, it, of course, we know it will be our flesh. And so as we read in the scripture and we look at Abraham yes. and we see that when God began to share with him, now he began to say unto him that I will make a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. So God was talking about provision. He was speaking about provision and he was also uh, speaking about protection. He said, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And so God was saying to Abraham that now, you know, there was an indicator. One of the indicators we said was. Uh, uh, God's voice, him speaking or the properties or the nudgings of the Holy Spirit. And then it was another uh, indicator was uh, uh, God's divine protection. Mm -hmm. God let him know that, man, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And then he goes on to let him know that, man, I'm going to provide for you. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says, and Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Verse number five, I like this. Then Abram took Sarah, his wife, mm -hmm. and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they uh, had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they came to the land of Canaan. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants will I give this land. And, and there he built an altar to the Lord and who had appeared to him. And so God, Abraham, because of God's voice, because of God appearing to him, we know that Abraham began, this was the first altar that Abraham built unto God, unto the Lord. And he built it and because he appeared to him. And so the scripture goes on to say that uh, God said to him, to your descendants, I'm going to give this land. And so I believe that when God gives us divine direction, the divine direction is not just only for you alone. Come on. But it's for uh, 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 many, as the Lord our God will call, but it's for your descendants. It's for your children's children. Remember the Bible says that a, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And then it goes on to say that uh, uh, the wealth of the wicked will be laid up for the just. Yes. But it's it talked about that you leaving an inheritance for your children's children, then the wealth of the wicked will be laid up for the just. A lot of times we'll quote the scripture and say that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. But we forgot the verse ahead. Nice. We forgot the verse that says that <coughs> that that us giving or leaving an inheritance for our children's children. Of course, one translation says that we will leave an inheritance or more stability. Ah. That we will leave a, 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 a more and godly living uh, for our descendants, for our children's children. You guys know, I always talk about this scripture in uh, Jeremiah 35. One, you know, one of the favorite uh, chapters in the Bible for Pastor Mike is Jeremiah 35. Because it talks about the Rechabites. And the Rechabites, their father had said to them, 200 years later, the prophet had laid before them, and he had laid before them drinks. And they said, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, prophet. We don't do that. We don't do the drinking. Our father said for us not to drink. And they had kept what their father had said for over 200 years. How many of us will put a stake in the ground and say that we are not going to partake in strong drink. We are not going to partake in uh, 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 drugs or booze and, or any of those things. 
how many of us will leave a stake in the ground for our children and our children's children? How many of us will leave a stake in the ground and say, we're not going to partake in pharmaceuticals and, and, and things that will uh, 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 just cloud our judgment and all those things. And so we will actually put a stake in the ground and yeah. say that we are going to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so the Bible goes on to say that after he built this altar and he moved from there mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the mountain east of Bethel and he pitched his tent in Bethel on the west, Ai. And so the Bible goes on to say that, so Abraham journey, journey going on still towards the, the south. Verse number 10 says, now there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there for the famine was severe in the land. And so some indicators that you are, you and I are to move is that there is a place of famine. And so if there is not a, if there's not a place that there is provision for us, then we know that we have to move to another spot. We know that we have to move to another place because God in his infinite wisdom would not have you being that he is the good, good father. That's who he is. He would not have you uh, be in a place where there is no provision. He would not have you be in a place where he is not going to take care of you. And so we know the scripture talks about how uh, the prophet had begun to uh, 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 the prophet Elijah. The Bible talks about him and begin to say that God had said unto him that he was to go down to the book of Sherith. Yes. And he went down to this book because God said that he had commanded the ravens to take care of the prophet. Yes. And so the, the ravens brought food and, and, and meat and provision because God had commanded them to bring provision to, according to 1 Kings 17, mm -hmm. to bring provision to the prophet. And so there was a book that was there. And we know the story. So the brook, he was drinking from the brook. And so because God had made a way for him at the brook of Sherit, because the ravens were coming there and they were providing for him, they were sustaining him. And so we know the scripture talks about that, that there, that there came a time after a little while that this brook of Sherit dried up. So, in other words, people of God, there was no more provision. And so when there is no more provision for us, then we have to listen to the voice of God, to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and see where is our next. Where is he leading us to next? So you're talking about next level living. Yes. And so it's so important that we don't get stuck in what God was doing. I, I remember telling you, I remember the saying they would say, what would Jesus do? But mm -hmm. I would like to present to you a, a more current statement that says, I would like to know what is Jesus doing? Mm -hmm. Not what would Jesus do, but what is he doing right now? Mm -hmm. And this is why the Bible said it was so important that Abraham, that he lived by the preceding word, mm -hmm. the word that, because if Abraham had not trained his ears to hear the voice of God and trained his spirit to obey when God spoke. Mm -hmm. Ah, listen, he would have killed Isaac. Mm -hmm. Your ability to hear God uh, may one day save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. It's so important that you begin to develop uh, your ears. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, the Bible says that we are God's sheep mm -hmm. and he's a good shepherd and we serve a speaking God. And he said, my sheep know my voice. Come mm -hmm. on. No, come on. Become intimately acquainted with my voice. Mm -hmm. Come on, genoscos me. I need you to know when I'm speaking to you. I need you to know when I'm prompting you. I need you to know when I'm 
functioning you. And so God, if Abraham, because God gave Abraham one set of instructions, mm -hmm. and that was to take Isaac up and to sacrifice him. But come on here. I need somebody to understand that the seeing eye and the hearing ear, God has given us them both. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to not only be able to see, you've got to be able to hear. You're not only, listen, God is saying that, listen, Abraham, I'm about to call you out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I'm about to call you out of the place where you were comfortable. Because how many of you all know growth and next level can't coexist mm -hmm. with comfort zones? All comfort and growth cannot coexist. And so whenever God is getting ready to uh, take you to the next level, the Bible said this, that the just shall live by faith, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith and not by sight mm -hmm. because the things that you currently are seeing are temporal, but the things that you don't see are eternal. And so it is so important that we sharpen our spiritual senses. This is not the time to be dull of hearing. This is not the time, oh my God, to have eyes, but you can't see mm -hmm. and ears and you can't hear. My God, you've got to know that when God is speaking, you got to get just like Samuel. When, 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 oh my God, the Bible says that Eli's eyes had gotten dim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it said, oh, but when Samuel went to him, it is our job to constantly put point you back to God. He said, it's not me talking. My mm -hmm. God. Listen, uh, Samuel, you're entering into the prophetic dimension. Mm -hmm. Your gifts are now starting to be sharpened. God is about to train you himself. How many of you all know that God will train his own prophets? Mm -hmm. And he began to say, the next time you hear that voice, what did he tell him? He said to say, uh, here am I. Mm -hmm. Your servant is listening. Yeah. My God, I wish somebody was listening. Can you just put down, I'm listening. I'm listening, God. My ears are open. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your ears would pop open and that you will supernaturally begin to hear on another frequency and that God's voice will not be drowned by the chaos of what you're going through, mm -hmm. but that you will command your soul to be still because God knows the path that you take. I need you to silence your soul. How do I quiet my soul, Makiba? Well, how do I quiet this noise in my head? You silence and quiet your soul by using the word of God. And you begin to tell your soul, so why are you disquieted within? I hope thou in God. Come on. David began to talk to his soul and say, I don't care how you feel. We're going to trust God. And so I want to encourage you tonight that you would trust God, that you would lean upon God, that you would not lean upon your logic because Abraham did not have a strategic plan. Come on here for all my logical thinkers that say you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a five-year vision and all of that. That's good, that's fine, and that's dandy. But I'm telling you that we serve a God that at a spur of a moment may require you to shift. And I want to ask you, how flexible are you? Because this next season, your victory is going to be dependent upon your, your flexibility. It's going to be dependent upon your ability to hear God and act. It's not enough just to hear, but your faith is going to have to have some action. And when God says, I need, have need of you, like he had need of the coat. He said, they said, what will we say to the owners? He said, you tell them that I have need of this coat. Mm -hmm. My God, because then, then you saw Jesus operating in his authority over creation. Mm -hmm. You see Jesus begin to say, I have authority. Let them know that I have need of the coat. My God, who does he have need of? Who are we talking to that God has been speaking to you? And he said, I have need of you. And I need you to move at the pace that I'm moving it. I need you to get in sync with what I'm saying so that you won't miss the drop spot. So you won't miss what what I'm releasing in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the Bible, Mike was beginning to say that sometimes when the brook dries up, it is just an indication that it is time for you to shift. Yes. And you have to flow 
and Come on. shift with God. Yes. Come on. And so as he's Woo. flowing, as he's shifting, yes. remember the prophet, the Bible talks about how uh, uh, the prophet, he was there and he said, and, and, and there, was a, there was an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And so we know that God could move any kind of way he wants to. Yes. And then, you know, there was a, a wind, but yes. God wasn't in the wind. Yes. But then there was a still, small voice. Oh and sometimes uh, we get familiar or we just, we'll, we'll get stuck in the way God used to do something. Instead of what he is doing currently. So, Mike, are you saying that sometimes we look for a mighty act? Mm -hmm. Like the fire. You oh, know, yeah. Elijah was used to the fire. He had mm -hmm. just called fire down from mm -hmm. heaven. Sometimes we're looking for something big. Sometimes we're looking for something. Oh, my God. The Bible said that the children of Israel, they they they, they knew God through his acts. They they Most knew him through, ways. come on, they knew him through observation. Mm -hmm. They saw what God did. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said Moses knew his ways. Mm -hmm. Woo, we got to know the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Which way is he flowing? Come mm -hmm. on. We got to to get into the current flow of the mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. We've got to allow him to take the lead. Come on. He is the leader. Mm -hmm. He is the helper. He said, listen, I want to help you, but you deny my help. Every mm -hmm. time I tell you to do something, you override it with your own desire. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to bring that desire under and I'm going to need you to give a sweet surrender. Woo! I'm telling you, the one that's going to make it in this season is the one that have a surrendered life. It's going to require us to surrender what we think, what we feel, what we know. And God wants to shift our perspective to what he knows. Woo! He said, listen, I need you to set your affection. In other words, I need to reset your mind. Mm -hmm. He says, I need you to set your affection on things above mm -hmm. and not on things that's happening in the earth. I need you to shift. I want to do a mind reset. I'm trying to reset your mind so I can reset your life. I need to give you a Holy Ghost reboot, but I need you to yield. I'm trying to take you to the place of flourishing. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you to the place of the land of milk and honey honey, mm -hmm. but you've got to begin to see me differently. Can I say this to you? That the mind is not just about your ability to think. Mm -hmm. Okay? The mind is your ability to think, right? It gives us the ability to have thought. I, I, I wrote something down and I want to make sure that I give this to you all tonight because the mind is not just about thinking. My goodness. Whew. I wrote it down. We got to surrender our mindset to God. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to take control over our minds. The Holy Spirit wants to redirect your mindset. Mm -hmm. And whenever he gets ready to redirect your mindset, according to Colossians 3 and 2, he says, I need you to set your mind on things above. Mm -hmm. Another translation said, I need you to feed on that which is above uh, and not only on the things of the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So what do you have to do? You've got to redirect your mindset. Uh, and can I tell you that? Thinking on things above is a choice. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what you thinking about is a choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, what you thinking about is a choice. You don't have to let every thought that come into your mind stay there and, and begin to build a stronghold. You have a choice. The Bible says you have the ability to grab hold of that thought. Mm -hmm. Take it captive. Pull it down. You're going to have to get violent about the things that are coming in and out of your mind because he said, I need you for one, surrender your mind. I'm going to need you to let me redirect your mindset and listen to this. He said, and set your affections on things above. The human mind is not just for you to think but the really important part of the human mind is it controls how you see god mm -hmm. Woo, your mind controls that's why he said you got to get renewed in your mind you got to let me reset how you see me they they saw the giants they didn't see the big god you 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 were scared of giants in the land mm -hmm. then evidently the way you saw me was small you thinking too small god was saying you mean to tell me you afraid of giants i am god the creator of the whole earth listen listen we've got to let god 
begin to reset our minds because your mind deals with how you see God. It deals with how you see uh, others. It deals with how you see yourself. And so if you're going to, if you're going to be divinely directed by God, you're going to have to allow God to reset your thinking. Yeah. I love the scripture in Isaiah 55. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Come on. Let him return to the Lord for, and he will have mercy on him. Yes. And to our God for, he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, yes. so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so what we have to do, people of God, Man, we have to pray and ask God, give us your thoughts. Yes. God, teach us your ways. Yes. Show us your ways. Because uh, 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 it's like, obviously, we're, we're, we're not there. Yes. Because a lot of times, as he be divinely direct us, a lot of times we'll have questions before we move out on what he says. Now, it's don't get me wrong. It's nothing wrong with asking God for details or asking God for God I'm not understanding this you know and so it's just like the scripture talks about this here you go Holy Spirit he's remember the Bible says this mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit came to Mary and said unto Mary that you know the the God is gonna uh, uh, impregnate she was like listen how is this gonna be she was like, I don't know no man, Lord. Yes. So she was asking like, because her understanding like, God, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Listen, I ain't touched no man. I ain't been with, <laughs> ain't no, been man. with no man. <laughs> Listen, I am pure as the driven snow. <laughs> and so God had to let her know. He said he had to let her know that. Listen, Mary, the, the this what you're going to have. The child is going to have. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. Yeah. And he's going to be the child of the Most High God. Yeah, and so, so God, be that was a legitimate, good question yeah. that Mary had. Because when the angel said, look, listen, Mary, you're about to have a baby. Like, uh-uh, no, I'm what? not. Hold up, wait a minute. You know? <laughs> and so I get that. And so a lot of times what we have to do, and then when Mary heard the word that the angel began to speak, she said, be it unto me according oh, to your word. Oh. And so what Mary did in yes, essence, God. God was giving her divine direction yes. and letting her know that, listen, I have divine direction for your life, for your womb. Uh, and so he yes. said he had divine direction for your womb because God had to use Mary's womb to bring Jesus into the earth. See, God needed a body. Uh, don't, you, don't you let nobody lie to you. And say that God don't need us. Yes, he does. Because it would have been illegal for him to do it without outside of a body. Yeah. And so he had to have a body. Yeah. He had to use a person to bring into the earth realm. And to in order for Jesus to come to be the sacrificial lamb. Remember, the Bible says that, that behold, the lamb that was slain before the foundations yes. of the world. And so he needed a body. The Jesus began to say, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will, O God. Yes. So he was letting him know, listen, I listen, God. He said that the, the, the Bible began to say in Revelation that, man, there was a cry. There was a mourning like, man, who going to go? And they like, listen, no, 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 no. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God, he is the one that God had already prepared before the foundation of the world that he would bring Jesus into our lives. We bring Jesus into the earth. Jesus will be the divine direction back to the Father God. <laughs> it was Jesus that literally... Gave us our first reset. Come on. Woo! Jesus reset it. Mm -hmm. Come on. His blood reset our trajectory. His blood reset the direction we was going. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for yes. a divine reset. My God. Even as Pastor Mike began to talk about how the, the angel began to say, God is going to overshadow you. Mm -hmm. I felt that for some of you all that are listening, that God is going to overshadow you. Mm -hmm. oh, he's going to overshadow you. 
He's going to give you the ability you didn't have, uh, that you couldn't produce in your own strength, uh, that what you couldn't do in your own ability. He said, Abraham, because you loved me enough mm -hmm. to take me at my word, even when you didn't have full disclosure, mm -hmm. you didn't have all the information, you didn't know exactly what I was going to do to you, mm -hmm. but something inside of you trusted my nature, mm -hmm. something inside of you trusted my character, that if God says to go here, I'd rather be where God is than to take my own path. Mm -hmm. My God, I thank you, God, today for a divine reset for those that are listening to yes. us, that there's coming a divine reset. And I just want to encourage you to be like Mary and say, be it unto me. Yeah. I'm telling you, when we were little kids, Mike, we used to sing that song. Lord, I'm available to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, woo. Mm -hmm. I want to know, do I got anybody out there that's really available to God? Mm -hmm. You know, it hasn't just become a cliche. Mm -hmm. I give myself away. Do we just sing it mm -hmm. so that you can use me? Listen, God is not unjust to forget your labor of love and how you minister unto the people Abraham mm -hmm. he's not just going to ask you to give up your son and not give up his mm -hmm. it was just a type and shadow I never wanted you to kill your child I mm -hmm. just wanted you to give me what you love the most I just wanted to know if you would really give yourself away if you would give me everything and not put anybody before me Abraham would you give me back the promise that I gave you mm -hmm. oh my god will you give me back the degree I gave you the ability to get Will you mm -hmm. give me back the gifts I gave you? Will you take your talents to the world? Or would you let me advance it in the kingdom? What do you value? Who do you value? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, God is asking us to surrender your mindset so he can give you a new idea. He, listen, I, I finally found my definition for the mind. It said this, the mind refers to your disposition or attitude. Mm -hmm. It is your way of thinking about life. Mm -hmm. It involves more than your ability to think or form thoughts. It has to do with the way you see God and the way you see truth. Mm -hmm. The way you see others and the way you see you. Listen, this is why you got to surrender your mind. Mm -hmm. And say, God, I just want, I want my mind. Let this mind be in me. Let yeah. this mind be in me. Come on, let means I, I'm going to allow it. Yeah, let yeah. this mind yeah. be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. Come on, I, I want to link my mind up with your mind. I'm not going to follow what my mind is telling me. I'm going to follow what your mind is saying. I'm willing to come up. God, I'm willing. Oh, my heart. I feel the presence of the living God. I feel the presence of the living God. Can I tell you all this? Oh, my God. The Bible said that there were 10 virgins. Mm -hmm. It says that all of them were pure. Mm -hmm. All of them, were, oh my God, were beautiful virgins. The Bible said the difference between the two is that five became content where they currently were. Oh my God. Woo! And the other five said there's got to be more. I got to prepare for more. I'm after more. There's more to God than this. Yeah. I'm not just going to take what is required. I'm willing to do more than that which is required. I'm willing to do more than just the baseline of what every other Christian is doing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to go in deeper. I'm going to make sure that I got more than enough oil. I'm not going to be satisfied with the status quo. I'm not going to be okay with just being here. Mm -hmm. yeah, just me and my four and no more. I'm not going to be okay with just being a local girl in the city of Chicago. But God, if you're calling me mm -hmm. beyond the borders of this city, and if you have need of me in another state, God, I'm willing to go because I love you. I'm a lay down lover. I'll lay this city down. I'll lay everything I know down and I will lay hold of what you're saying. Why? Because I trust you. Yeah. Ooh, in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> Amen and amen. Take it, Mike. Oh, my God. Woo! That was so, so very rich, people <laughs> of God. Man, God just want us to make sure that we are listening to his voice. Yes. Remember, we said the voice of God is one of the indicators that he lets us know as it relates to divine direction. Mm -hmm. And so that's an indicator like, okay, man, I'm listening to his voice. 
And then we know another indicator uh, as it relates to divine direction is God will provide. Yeah. God will give provision to us. Provision. And he will also protect us. Yeah. Not only will he give us provision, but he will protect us. And so we will know that this is an indicator that, man, God, you're protecting me. Yes. You are providing, providing for, for me and my family, just like he did for Abraham. Mm -hmm. Remember in that same chapter, the Bible talked about how uh, 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 Abraham got a little nervous because his wife was fine like mine. Uh -huh. And so he was <laughs> like, listen, I need you to tell him that uh, uh, you my sister. Yes. You know, no, 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 you don't. It's, it, I'm not talking about that. But anyhow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, and so the Bible says that man, God protected Abraham and Sarah yeah. And and he Pharaoh commanded, he commanded that uh, don't nobody do no harm to this man or this woman. Yeah. So that is an indicator that as you are traveling, as you are on the journey yeah. where God is saying for you and I to go, know that he is going to provide for you yeah. and he is going to protect you. And then we know that we also said that another indicator that there is a time for you to move, but there is a famine or there is something going on yeah, in the, the land. And so the brook has dried up. And so it's like there's no more provision in the brook. So that means that God is going to sustain you somewhere else. Yeah. And so we have to know and listen to his voice and follow his promptings. You'll see each time that God began to say to Abraham or God began to say to Elijah, listen, I want you to go somewhere else. The Bible says that they immediately, uh, in, in so many words, they obeyed the voice of God and they went to where God was directing them to go. Because when we obey the voice of God, hear me and hear me good people of God, when we begin to obey the voice of God, that's where the provision of God will overflow in our lives. Yes. And so divine direction is a place of flourishing. Yes. If you look at the life of Abraham, because he divinely was directed by God, yes. God calls him to flourish. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, people of God, God <laughs> loves us. It's time for us to give. Amen. <laughs> We're going to segue into our ministry of yes, giving. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good, people of God. Yes. And so we know that uh, you'll see across the screen, is going across the screen, the, by, the way in which you can give. Yes. But I'm telling you, people of God, when God gave, he gave his very best. Yes. And that very best was Jesus Christ. And so if you don't know him, if you need him to direct you, the first step in, for, in order for him to direct you yeah. is you surrendering your life to him. And so you have to give him full control. Yeah. It, you know, it's just like, man, you know, many of times, sometimes we don't even listen to the GPS. No. <laughs> well, sometimes we don't even follow the directions or the instructions. We like, I got this. You know, it's just like me and McKee, we have this inside joke. Uh, uh, it's a commercial with Lil Penny. Remember Penny Hardaway, the basketball player? Yeah. And then he had this little dial. And he was like, man, throw, I'm, uh, pass me the ball. He's like, I'm open. He's like, I know, fool. <laughs> And so sometimes <laughs> we we are so powerful. We're like, I got this. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. No, you don't. And so we have to listen to God. And so we have to invite him into our hearts. I'm telling you, people of God, if you don't know him, man, it, I would get to know him because we have so much fun in God. Yeah. Now we know that we're gonna we're gonna have tests, we're gonna have trials and all those things. But it's so better being on the winning side oh than to be on the losing side because we have somebody that we can go to. Yeah. We can go to God and he's able to help us. He's able to give us divine direction and say, listen, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And so sometimes it may be he'll give you divine direction as it relates to your job. He may say, uh, uh, listen, I want you to bless your, your supervisor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he might say that. Or he may say, well, you know what? Your time is up here. I want you to go somewhere else. And so we have to listen to his voice, people of God, because he is his voice. Man, it is so good 
for us to listen to his voice because he is not going to tell us to go somewhere wrong. He's not going to tell us to do something wrong. Now the enemy, he going to tell you not don't no don't, don't give that. He going to say no, 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 give $5, give $10 <laughs> or give a dollar. He's going to say that. Listen. Listen to the voice of God even even as it relates to our giving. Yeah. That we'll listen to him be and, and be spirit led by God's spirit on what to give. We know that we give 10%, we know that. And then our, our, our tithe or our offering is that's above our tithes. And so I'm telling you, people of God, the old folk taught us, you can't be God giving. <laughs> no matter how you try. <laughs> if I was seeing what he does. <laughs> oh my, please. Oh God. If I was a singer, Lord I mercy. would tell you. Oh. <laughs> Listen, it is so much fun. I'm serving telling you. God. Yes. Serving God. It really is. And yes. so uh, you guys see on the screen, if you want to give, you can give. Uh, 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 you want, and then also, people have got listen. If you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, yes. remember, according to Romans 10 9 and 10, if you have a Bible or you can Google it, you can go to your phone or what have you, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Let us know. Uh, we want to send you something, we want to encourage yes. you. Get in a good Bible believing church yes. where you can be discipled and that you can grow. A good place for you to start off, uh, uh in your uh, a walk with the Lord is the book of John just reading about uh, Jesus and his life so start in the book of John that's in the New Testament and begin to just read the Bible uh, and you may like well Pastor Mike I don't understand everything I'm reading that's okay the Bible says if any man lack wisdom you can ask. he can ask of God I, when I first started, I didn't understand everything I was reading. But what did I do? I kept on reading. <laughs> and sometimes people of God will even, even listen to this. Yes. As God began to give this to me, mm -hmm. even sometimes we don't know where we're going. Sometimes the GPS, it because it's not a place that's familiar to us. Yeah. And I've, I've been in that situation where God, you know, the GPS is not talking. It ain't saying nothing like And sometimes I'm wondering, like, am I going in the right direction, God? Because yeah. I don't want to get so far that I'm so far that I got to make a, a U-turn or what have you and, and go back the other way. But it's like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to keep on going. That's it. Keep on keep going, on people going. of God. Keep Stay on, on the course. Yes. Keep on the journey because I'm telling you, listen for the voice of God because the voice of God will speak to you. Yes. The promptings of the Holy Spirit will say, listen, uh-uh, no, stay there. Remember, just like we talked about on Sunday, the, the, the God began to give the children of Israel the cloud by day and the fire by oh, night. My. And so as the cloud began to lift, they knew that it was time for them to move. And so as the glory cloud of God, as he began to lift, then you know it's time for you to move. And then the fire, I'm telling you, it's to light your way, people of God. So begin to look for the cloud. Begin to <laughs> follow after the fire. I'm telling you, people of God, God wants to do something in your life. <laughs> well, we thank you for tuning in to our Tuesday night Bible study. We're here every week, 7 o'clock p.m. Yes. Central Standard Time. Listen, follow us on Sunday. If this has added value to your life, if this has blessed you, share it. Yeah. Come on, yeah. where are my social butterflies? Mm -hmm. I need my social butterflies. Oh, listen, share, share, share the message of Jesus Christ. Let's help somebody else be encouraged yeah. by just sharing the word on tonight. So we don't want to just receive for ourselves, but we want to be social butterflies. We want to spread the word of God and let them know good news that God is still in control. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless. God bless. Stay hydrated. <laughs>